Thanks for checking out this video. So this is one of my kind of weekly throw something up on a Wednesday type video where sometimes it's just an opinion piece, sometimes it's a review of like comics, uh, horror comics that is, or sometimes it's one of these top five lists that I am fond of, of and have started to do. So if you have ideas for top five lists, go ahead and put some comments down there. But this particular topic, I'm very interested to see what people comment about because I would love your takes on not necessarily your top five like I'm going to do, but some of your favorite horror theater experiences. So obviously this video is my top five theater uh, horror theater experiences, uh, but I'm also going to give a bonus. I'm going to give an honorable mention first, and the one that almost made my top five list, I was thinking about it, is Giant Spider Invasion uh, with Riff Tracks Live. Now if you're not familiar with what Riff Tracks is, that's the guys who originally did Mystery Science Theater 3000 on Comedy Central, and they just riff the movie. They show a crappy movie, and they talk over it and make fun of it, and it's always hilarious. I've always been a fan of theirs. So they have an iteration called Riff Tracks now, where it's online. If you just go to Riff Tracks with an X dot com, you get all the audio files for big movies, lesser known movies, of them making fun of things and talking over the film. Lots of great jokes. So they had one called uh, Giant Spider Invasion, which I had not seen that film before. Uh, it's from like, I think it's from the 70s, but it's one of those movies that on its own, it is so awful, it's hilarious. But then them riffing on top of it just took it to that next level and it was amazing. And that was in the theater uh, through Fathom Events. Fathom Events will come up a few times during this ranking because they have brought some great stuff to theaters. So if you're not familiar with Fathom Events, look them up. Rift Tracks, look them up. So that was my honorable mention, was the Rift Tracks live version of Giant Spider Invasion. My number five is just for the film itself, pretty much, and that is Ari Aster's Hereditary. Now, the main reason being I went into this film not really knowing what to expect, knowing nothing about Ari Aster. I mean, everyone who went into Hereditary pretty much knew nothing about him because that was his first film our first big film, and I was pretty blown away by how great the film looked, how wonderful the feel of it was, how intense it was, what an interesting story puzzle presented to me, uh, was presented to me on screen, and then I had to take time afterwards to put all the puzzle pieces together and really figure out what was going on and in what order. I love that type of stuff in film. So uh, yeah, it, it was mainly that experience, but I do... <laughs> I do remember another thing that kind of kicks it up a notch for me is that I went with a buddy and we, and we both loved the film. But as soon as it was over, you uh, heard tons of people around us getting up and saying, well, that was stupid. That sucks. Tons of that. And he and I looked at each other and were like, uh, loved it. This was amazing. The other key thing during the film is that during the I'm not going to spoil it for anyone, but you know, the scene, the most intense messed up scene, um, you audibly heard in the, in the, uh, in the audience. Ooh. So, uh, that was pretty funny. So my, no, that's my number five is hereditary. My number four now is a quiet place. Now I'm not saying a quiet place because of the movie necessarily. Although I do think it's a good movie. It's not like anything on par with hereditary. I think the experience in the theater was particularly awesome with A Quiet Place because since it's a film where the characters are not speaking, they have to stay quiet, there's a lot of quiet in the film. So when I was sitting in the theater, if you just moved a little bit, you were making noise. And I don't know about you, but I'm the type of person that does not like to make noise in the theater because then I feel bad. I feel like I'm interrupting someone else's theater experience. So you, you become very aware of how you make noise and how other people make noise when you're watching a film like that in the theater with other people. So I'm hearing people, you know, crinkling with the paper on their boxes of snow caps or raisinets or whatever it is, and just munching on popcorn, that becomes very loud. So you become super aware of how loud we normally are, especially in a very quiet setting like that. And I think that really enhanced the film for me. It puts you more in the, well, not so much. I was going to say it puts you more in the shoes of the characters in there. Not so much in the sense that, you know, there's no, no danger, but like them, you are feeling like you're trying not to make noise. And so you kind of 
get a bit extra, you know, feeling from the film, which adds to the atmosphere of it, really. And, uh, you know, I was even trying to, like, not shift in my seat, which was becoming uncomfortable at times because I wanted to shift in my seat. And, you know, those typical theater seats, it was at a Regal. They're loud when you shift around. You know, they creak and stuff. So I'm just like, I gotta not move. I don't want to be that guy just, like, creaking in my chair during the film. So for that reason, uh, A Quiet Place makes my number four for theater experiences. You don't get that with a lot of films. Now, number three uh, has a lot to do with the venue. Some to do with the film, but a lot to do with the venue. My number three is the It remake by um, Machete. Machete. Machete? I think that's how this, you say the last name. The people who, um, the brother and sister who did the film. But it, uh, it was a good remake. I really enjoyed it. And it was very cinematic. I saw it at a drive-in theater. Shout out to Benji's Drive-In Theater, which is not too far from where I live. So I do like to go to Benji's when we can. Uh, they have a really nice place. And just drive-in theaters in general are super fun. I love them. I feel at home there. And always have a great time. So to see a really good horror film there then too, especially one that looks even better on a bigger screen, it was just a great experience. You know, I'm in my glory when I'm at drive-in theaters in the first place. Then you add to that a really good horror film that's cinematically wonderful looking, and it's a great experience. So that's why It Remake, which the It Chapter 2, not that great. It Chapter 1, quite good. So that makes my number three. Now my number two has to do with Fathom Events. And that is the anniversary, I forget which, I don't know if it was which 30th, 40th, whatever anniversary of Alien, the original Alien, Seeing that in theaters was so good because, you know, they clean those they clean those films up to do these reissues, especially to show them in the theaters. But man, how good that looked! I was not prepared for it. It looked beautiful. It looked so crisp. It looked so clean. It took the film from being an amazing film in the first place to an even better film experience because. On the big screen, not only did they really clean it up so you can see a lot more and see more intricacies of the set design, of the costume design, of the creature design, but since it's so much bigger, you feel more immersed in it. And it really does enhance that experience of a wonderful film like Alien, which if you've never seen Alien, please, you gotta see Alien. It's, it's wonderful. But then think about that on the big screen, cleaned up even more, just looking so crisp and amazing. It was awesome. Then we come to my number one, and this one also has to do with Fathom Events, and this was another one of those anniversary screenings where they cleaned up the film and then showed it on the big screen, and I really enjoyed this film a lot. And then once I saw it this way in the theater, it kind of changed the film a little bit for me, and it, it took me from really liking it to loving it, and it is now one of my favorite horror films, and that is, if not my favorite horror film, actually, The Shining, Stanley Kubrick's The Shining. Seeing that in the theater was, without a doubt, my best, my favorite theater-going experience of my lifetime. I will never forget it. Just the feeling of the Overlook Hotel being an even better bigger part of the film because it's so much larger on the screen you get lost in it you feel like the set's so much bigger you feel like you're inside of the overlook as opposed to when you watch it on your tv it's just more immersive and massive and you see so much more of it and it feels more imposing it just makes that overlook hotel so much more of a character in that film and i just love it on top of that you know it's stanley kubrick's the shining it's a wonderful film it looks amazing Great cinematography, directing, acting, all of that stuff. So that is why The Shining in the theater was my favorite experience. So yeah, uh, I look forward to eventually doing more uh, theater going that I have these types of feelings about. But you know, these are rare. These are hard to come by. So I would love to hear, if you're watching this, put it in the comments. Even if you don't want to do like a top five, feel free to do a top five personally. But just give me like one or two and say these are the ones that off the top of my head I remember having an amazing time in the theater with. Uh, and if you want to go off of horror as well, that's fine. Because if I went off of horror, I would also say 
the Riff Tracks live version of Tommy Wiseau's The Room. That was another wonderful one. Really ranks up there, especially with the audience yelling and throwing spoons. My friend and I playing tossing a football in the aisles. A ruckus time. It was pretty awesome. But anyway, I don't want to get too far off on that one. But uh, go ahead, put some comments down there. Let's talk. Let's get nerdy. Do me a quick favor, though. Hit subscribe if you can. And you can. Takes like a second. Costs you nothing. Totally free. Painless. And you're helping me out. That is your way to repay me. If you like any video I've ever done, including this one, hit that subscribe for me. Join this nerdy horror community and uh, comment because that's what I'm looking for. I'm looking to get nerdy and talk with people. Also, if you, like I said in the beginning, if you have other ideas for like top fives you want to hear from me, go ahead and put them down there. I'll, I'll put them in my notes and, and try and get to those as well. But thank you very much for checking this out. Uh, I really do appreciate your time. And until next time, keep it brutal.